What's going on everyone? It's Wilson and in this quick video I want to go over why you should never ever chase a stock and I'll show you a couple examples uh, on on why you shouldn't do it. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made as a trader and it took me a very very long time to overcome is I tend to chase stocks a lot. You know I chase them, I think the price is going to go higher, I end up getting in the wrong um, the wrong entry point and then uh, the stock gets shorted like crazy and then you end up just holding 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 and then you 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 go all the way to the end of the day the stock doesn't go up and you become a bag holder because you end up holding it until the next day praying that it will go up but if you look at all the trends in in a lot of other stocks where there was a lot of upward momentum from the gapping uh, from the, from the uh, pre-market highs and you try to get in and you don't take your profits and you end up chasing the stock what happens is that at the end of the day it's going to go all the way down you become a bag holder and there's no continuation play you know you know chances are that one only one out of 10 stocks will continue to play upwards uh, going on to the next day so uh, because of that you become uh, you just end up holding on to the stock for a long time so if you if you're if you're trying to tell yourself oh I'm going to do a swing trade then that's not the strategy to do it. You don't want to buy in the gap. You know you don't want to do a gap and go strategy. But let me show you an example. Friday was an awesome play. Uh, there was a lot of momentum in the stock market. Uh, a lot of people were able to clock in their profit. But let me show you an example where if you don't take your profits and you end up chasing the stock, things can go really wrong. So the first one I want to get into is Mark M A R K. Um, without studying the company or anything, this stock jumped up and opened at pre-market highs at like 440. Uh, this It is a solid company, don't get me wrong, but without looking at fundamentals, without looking at too much, uh, there you look at the news and they say they partnered up with a big Chinese social media company, uh, the Tencent WeChat, and the stock just surged up uh, during extended hours. Now what happens was, let's say you want to play the early first 30 minutes, right? So you see these candlesticks in the first 30 minutes. Let's take a look at it with a closer zoom up. So as we zoom into the stock in the early trading, you can tell that once it opened, people were shorted and it dropped, the dropped, the dropped. You know, usually when there's such a big gap to fill from the previous close, uh, it can either push for a little bit and then a major pullback or it can do one of these massive drops right but you know that because you see the volume on the bottom right here that there's a lot of rapid volume a lot of buyers and sellers what you know is that this stock is going to move at least for the first 30 minutes to one hour so it, it is possible for a squeeze and a quick scalping profit but you have to watch it closely. So let's say you play your game right, you saw it drop and you saw the second candlestick drop and then this third red candlestick and you're like, okay, uh, here's the pullback. And as soon as you see this green one, you you probably think about, okay, it's around $4, uh, pre-market was above 440, so let's try to get into stock. Now, um, if you did, if you did buy in at four dollars right here, given the example, and you rode it all the way up to let's just say uh, a safer play four fourteen four fifteen, you should take your profits, right? There's no way you know that this is going high, and there's no way you're going to know if the stock will continue jumping out for for an extended breakout. But once you see the red, you should take your profits. That's the first rule. You know, you should take your your quick ten cent profit and get out of it. Especially when you see the second one, this is a big warning sign, right? But let's say you didn't do that. Now this is where the mistakes a lot of traders make. So they see this green one, they're like, oh, okay, maybe it's just some consolidation. And it does look like it, you know, I don't blame you. And then you think it's going to continue going up for the highs towards the 450s. But what happens is that you you don't take your profits, you see this, and you and once it gets to this red stick right here, you see this big short right here from all the sellers, and you're still not taking your, your profits and you get into a loss because it drops all the way down to 378. And what happens with novice traders is that they pray, they chase the stock and they pray it will continue to go up. And that's a very big beginner mistake. You keep seeing these reds go, go to a lower, low, lower, low. And then if we look at the overall day, it ends the day at a much lower than the $4 because that's where you bought in at. And it was possibly a good entry point because you saw that it was going back up after the massive opening drop 
but you're chasing the stock and then you end up holding and you're praying for some midday or some power hour for it to go up around here but it just doesn't happen and the next day we don't know how the stock will move on Monday when the market opens but if it doesn't continue you you technically already lost 50 cents per share because of the fact that you bought in at four and you didn't take your profits and you didn't cut your loss you end up chasing it and you became a bag holder so that's a huge mistake and I made those mistakes all the time I end up holding these stocks for three or four days and I watch it get lower and lower and it's just like slowly bleeding to death so don't make that same mistake and take your profits quickly cut your losses quickly if you missed it that's okay and once it drops cut your losses you know it's okay to lose 10 cents rather than losing 50 cents that's especially your day trading now if you're swing trading and you want to get in this position you believe mark is a good company which it is if you look it up they own a lot of stuff like ai tools uh they own vegas.com bikini.com it's a great company let's say you believe that this company will perform long term now even if you're thinking of this as a swing trade position you want to get in at the best entry point possible that's the whole point of swing trade right you hold it for like three days max and you want to get the best value out of it so you want to get in at a low entry point what i would do is i will wait until the the midday or even towards the end of the day to see how the movement is going i will look for two things i will look for a low which is around right here and then i will look to see the volume if there is still continuation volume that means the stock is still strong and hasn't slept yet it's not in hibernation mode and it can continue to play throughout the entire days if i see both of those and i'm looking to do a swing trade then i will get in at one of these low points now getting in at 340 for a swing trade on a continuation play on monday up back up to four then that's profitable for me rather than getting in four and praying that it'll go back up and chasing the stock so don't chase you know another good example same play friday crazy nete they had some crazy catalysts about how they were generating a bunch of money off the pos systems and how they they partner with some airline that's accepting payments using their payment system boom market opens this thing goes straight up when i see something like this i either get in the play when it's going up once i spot this upward trend right here and i try to exit as soon as i get up there or as soon as i see that it's not in breakout mode anymore so if i see consolidation as a day trader what i would do is i would try to exit now what happens is that sometimes people miss the stock in the beginning right first 30 minutes you miss it so let's say you try to get in at this spike right here uh let's say you see it's still spiking up the reason i never get in when it's going this crazy is because when a stock has this load of a float price changes like crazy right so you know when it gets to the top people are going to short it like no tomorrow shorters are always in play so usually what happens i mean this one already i consider it as lucky but sometimes when it gets all the way up here bam a big red candle all the way back down and it continues trending downwards on to the next day but let's say you miss the stock never get in riding the wave like this and chasing it don't chase Let's say you decide to say, okay, I see it, it's going well. You see it right here. This is the first time you catch it at around the 650, 660 mark. You're like, maybe it'll continue going up and it'll pull HMNY or something and continue going. So you decide to get in at 660. Now what happens, you see a little boost up to 690, take your profits, get out. You know, remember, this could be a matter of 10 minutes, but just get out. And if you don't, look what happens. You chase the stock and it drops 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 and it starts trending downward for the rest of the day sure there was some midday momentum that picked up now this is your chance to recover if you spot this and you're and this is on your watch list and you have your alert set get out you know even if it's at a loss let's say right here uh 640 645 you probably had a 15 cent loss that's okay get out uh don't hold it and don't keep chasing the stock because what happens is that you see it starts trending downwards lower supports lower supports and then bam it ends at a very low now again this is not looking at the fundamentals of the company this is not talking about whether this is a good company and whether or not it will hit ten dollars by the end of the year we as swing and day traders we have to be able to take the profits cut the losses don't ever chase the stock i made that mistake too many times and don't be a bag holder you know if you are going to swing trade it 
Remember, wait till you see the patterns. Wait for these shorts to kick in so that they have to buy back the cover like right here in the midday and then find a low entry point to get in for the next day's swing. And make sure you always look at the volume down here. Look at the RSI indicator. That's why I have this here to see if the stock is overbought or oversold. And if there's still strong volume, which there is on the stock, chances are that there will be a continuation play on Monday, which makes it a good swing. So if you bought it somewhere low towards the end of the day after looking at the entire trend and seeing how it was trading, then bam, you know, maybe you get another spike the next day. That is how you swing trade if that is your excuse. If not, don't ever chase a stock. Take your profits, cut your loss, have your risk management. Well, I hope this video helped and I hope these two examples show you why you should never chase a stock. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and you can follow me on Twitter at any time at iswilson8. Have a nice weekend.